So I recently moved into this new studio, and so far it has been a work in progress. I have hung a few pieces of art on the wall, the main one being this gallery wall behind me that looks incredible, but the only thing that is 100% complete is my new desk setup. And this desk setup is the most minimal setup I've ever used, and today we're gonna talk about it, I'm gonna explain everything I'm using, and explain why I decided to take this approach with this new studio. And big shout out to Logitech for sponsoring today's video and giving me access to this system early. Early. So first off, here's why I decided to go back to a more minimal setup for my photo and video editing. If you watched the channel a couple years ago, back in 2021, you know that I experimented with an extremely minimal setup where I basically just had one desk and a computer and that was it. Now, that setup worked great, but the issue with it was I could not move that setup anywhere. It was stationary. And then in my last studio, I thought I would enjoy working at the same spot more if I made the desk really cool, specked out the whole studio, and I realized that one, I was unhappy because I was constantly in that office editing photos, editing videos, I felt like I could never leave, and two, the studio was inefficient because I didn't have the ability to move my editing setup and utilize all the space of that room. So now with a fresh start, I've decided to strip everything away and go with a setup that one, I can move at any time, and two, I can take anywhere with me. Now everything in this setup and in my workflow is laid out in front of me. That's how minimal this is. It's all on this extremely small desk and the main component is this right here, the Logitech MX Creative Console. But before we can talk about this, let me go through everything else in this setup. First is my MacBook Pro, which I got back in 2022, the best investment I've ever made in a computer. Unfortunately, I am filling up the memory constantly on this now. I have four terabytes of storage, so I gotta figure something out I might upgrade to a computer with more RAM next year, but I'm gonna try to solve the problem myself first before I spend that money. Now next up is this Logitech MX Mini Keyboard. Now I went with this keyboard because it reminded me of the keyboard that I used when I worked at Epitome ATL and primarily worked off of a laptop. This is the first time that I've only used a laptop in quite some time. And when it comes to typing on a MacBook, the keys are just not very tactile. I have to write all these YouTube videos. I have to write scripts as well as, you know, emails and business stuff. So it's nice to have a keyboard that feels a little more tactile and is more enjoyable to work on. And on top of that, it's nice to be able to put my laptop somewhere else and have the keyboard so the screen can be farther away and I'm not as hunched over the computer. Now the second component of this is the Logitech MX Mac. Now this mouse is first and foremost really cool looking. I just love the design of it. It's ergonomic, it's simple to use, but most importantly, and the reason why I'm using it is because you can actually charge this mouse while you're using it, unlike Apple's mouse, which is the reason why I haven't used a mouse with my laptop in quite some time. And to round out this Logitech MX setup, I do have the MX Brio, which I use as a webcam when I need it. It's not something I constantly keep on my laptop. It's more just there when I have to have it. So now let's get into the core of my workflow with this minimal setup. This right here is the Logitech MX dial pad and this is the Logitech MX keypad and together these create the MX creative console which is a new tool that Logitech has introduced for creators like you and me to have more efficiency with our workflow to be more productive and the best part is they integrate right out of the box with Adobe software. Now full disclosure this is the part of the video that is sponsored by Logitech. If you remember about a month and a half ago I mentioned it in a video how I was in New York and I couldn't talk about why I was there, this is why I was there. I was getting a demonstration of this creative console and I was learning how to use it and for the last month and a half, I've integrated it into my workflow and began making the most of it. So real quick, let me show you how I've been using this for the last month and a half, how I've integrated it into my workflow and how it's a part of this minimal setup. Now it all starts with the nine keys on the MX Creative keypad that can be customized however you want based on your needs using the Logitech software. So I customize mine to emulate my workflow every day. I have keys programmed to open YouTube so I can check my analytics, find a video to listen to while I'm editing, and then I can press the Lightroom key or the Premiere Pro key to launch the software and begin my edits for the day. And having this customized progression of my workday is really good for someone like me who can be easily distracted. Now, let me show you real quick the customizable capabilities of these nine keys. So this is how you customize the keypad. This is the Logi Options software. Now you can see all the components that I'm using, get diagnostics on them. We're gonna click the keypad, click custom, and this 
this is where we can customize all the buttons on this tool. Now you can see my button layout here. I have it set up and color coded so I can easily see what I need. I have the main applications that I use like Premiere, Lightroom, and Photoshop. I also have things like Finder and YouTube. But if you were to customize one of these, you can go over to all these quick actions right here, go over a page and add in any of these different shortcuts to your console. So let's say we want to add in a web link right here. We can add in Instagram. We can change the title to Instagram and we can actually customize the thumbnail by sliding up the text so it matches the other ones. We can change the color of it as well. For me, purple for some reason reminds me of Instagram. So we add that in and now you can see it's in the console. So I can swipe over on the console, click on that button and launch Instagram. Now you can do the exact same thing like I already mentioned with Photoshop, Premiere. You can go in and customize any of these actions. So mine is based on my workflow using Lightroom. Essentially everything that I would normally do when I sit down to edit a photo, I've set these buttons. So it's a progression of that. And also it's an added bonus. I should mention that all the plastic parts on this console are made from recycled plastic. It's 72% recycled plastic for the graphite and 55% for the pale gray, which is the one that I'm using. And there's also no paint used. Now that same customization that you can do, you know, to hit the Lightroom button or the Photoshop button applies to individual applications like Photoshop, like Lightroom and Premiere Pro. Now I primarily use this for Lightroom. So let me show you kind of an example of how I'm using this day to day. So my workflow would go a lot like this. We'll go ahead and launch Lightroom. And as you can see, the buttons change to what I would normally use. The first is going through images and flagging the ones that I want to keep. So I'll go ahead and flag the best photos. Now I can click on the button that filters everything by flagged. So now when I click that, you'll see that everything in my Lightroom is now filtered by the flagged photos. From here, I can click on the button that allows me to crop my image. I can do any crop size that will pop up. I can customize these buttons as well. If there's a crop you use a lot, for me, 16 by 10 is one I use a lot on my Instagram project. Now, typically the next step in my workflow is masking. So I can click the shortcut to allow me to easily get to my linear mask, I can drag that down. And then on the dial pad, I can click on this button on the right and it's gonna bring up my action ring. Now with this ring, I have the ability to quickly select what adjustment I wanna make. I can do exposure, contrast, I can customize this ring as well. And then from there, I can twist the dial and make changes to whatever setting I select. Now, here's another example of me quickly selecting a mask. If I wanna do a radial mask, just hit the shortcut for it and there we go. Now, another step of my work workflow is removing things from the image. So I can click the remove button. I can go over and easily use this tool to remove any distractions. Now, once I do that, typically my next step is to either export the photo or open in Photoshop. So I can click on the open in Photoshop shortcut. It's going to open the image. And then from here, I can use the same shortcuts. I can add a layer and then I can click on the opacity tool, use the dial pad to change that opacity. I can export the image from here as well. The options are really endless to how you can utilize this with Lightroom, Photoshop, and Premiere. With time, you can do so much more with this and you also have access to the Logitech Marketplace, which is gonna allow you to get access to other people's workflow, download other people's icons, and basically have this database or community of users who are also using the tool so you can get the most out of it. And one more thing about the MX Creative Console, when you purchase the MX Console, you get a three month complimentary Adobe Creative Cloud all apps membership for free. Like it just comes with the console. So essentially it pays for itself with that first three months of the creative cloud. Now there is a link in the description down below that you can check out to get more information on the MX console, as well as more information on that free membership. Really appreciate Logitech for allowing me to have access to this early, to try it out, incorporate it into my workflow and really create a setup here that I know I can take anywhere with me and get myself out of this office sometimes and still be productive and creative. In a lot of ways, this this new office feels like me going back to how I worked in my original office way back in the day on this YouTube channel and me doing the daily photo project on Instagram also feels like that as well. I'm just getting back to photography, getting back to editing the things that I love doing and being able to move around with my setup and not be tethered to a desk all day long is a big piece of that.